this program proudly brought to you by Foster's, Australia's classic lager, Honda Civic and Casino Canberra. Expectations of millions. Welcome to a field of dreams. Fabulous Flemington. As the countdown continues to that first Tuesday in November, nerves of steel are needed. Today, the best of the best Racing's Elite has to offer is on the line. From the marquees to the mounting yards, this is a day like no other. This is Derby Day. everyone and welcome to Flemington for the opening day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival of 2000 and as you can see behind me it's a new look Flemington this year with the magnificent 50 million dollar members grandstand being officially opened today and all of the people up there and indeed all around this magnificent race course are going to see a day of racing to behold it is the greatest single day of racing on the Australian turf calendar with three group threes three group twos and our group one treble the rising stars in the Amy Victoria Derby, the wait for age champions and the cup hopefuls in the Louis Vuitton McKinnon and the flying machines in the Salinger. But as well as being a magnificent day of racing, it also signals the beginning of Australia's week-long party. And who better to keep us up to date with that side of things than the lady at the Channel 10 marquee, Sandra Sully, good morning to you and welcome back to Flemington. Good morning, Peter. It's fantastic to be here. We are, as always, looking forward to a fabulous week at Flemington, full of fashion, fun and colour, and, as always, the opportunity to catch up with lots of old friends. You know, this is Australia's biggest annual sporting event, always attracts record crowds, and I think the proof of its popularity is the fact that the VRC's membership in recent years has literally doubled. So it just goes to show you how important this event is on both the racing and social calendars. Well, as always, an array of stars before you will be dropping by to say good day. And some of those include the face of spring racing, and that is, of course, the uh, recent silver medalist at the uh, Sydney Games, Tatiana Grigorieva. Andrew Hoy will be dropping by, the diva of Australian musical theatre, Marina Pryor, and, of course, the latest addition to TEN's team of talent, Robe McManus. I'm really looking forward to meeting him. Well, we should, uh, we'll be catching up with all those very shortly, and uh, we'd like you to sit back and enjoy an armchair ride with a difference one man who always makes a difference come cup carnival time the delightful the sartorial it's a good morning very good morning to tim webster sandra good morning to you and to our viewers around australia good evening to our viewers in north america well this is it as good as it gets as peter said the finest day of racing you'll find anywhere in australia many will tell you one of the finest anywhere in the world and it all builds up to that great race on tuesday afternoon the fosters melbourne cup this is the time of the year when legends are created heroes emerge and standing above them all is this fella 
J.B. Bart Cummings, the winner of 11 Melbourne Cups. Come to the races and you mix with people like Bart. Racing is their lives. Or you mix with people who just come to have a good time and back a few winners. And it's all done with a tremendous amount of style. And speaking of which, here's the lady that knows all about it. She follows who's who and what they're wearing. Good morning, Lynn Talbot. Good morning to you, Tim. Now, look, I've just been wandering around the birdcage and the nursery area, and like here in front of the members' lawn, it is a wash with colour. As you can see, the Flemington roses are in bloom, and we're only up for more colour and vibrancy as the cavalcade of fashion arrives. Now, throughout the day, Tim, I'll be keeping you posted on what's happening in the Maya fashions on the field. Would you believe there's $130,000 worth of prizes to be won? It's just fantastic. I'll also be chatting to some of Australia's leading fashion designers and some of our up and coming ones so looking forward to that but look dressed in our best who knows whether we're going to be too hot too cold or just right to enjoy derby day maybe tim bailey can shed some light ah yes the character and the color of the melbourne cup carnival and derby day the best day in australian racing and i got that straight from the horse's mouth and that horse happens to be far lap now the weather oh, i've got a dodgy job it has been raining cats and dogs for the last week but the bureau tells me and they're good boys that this the natural enemy of the melbourne cup carnival will not be needed today the showers will clear we'll it's going to be a bit brisk, don't worry about that. 18 degrees, a big southerly blow, mainly cloudy, but dry, the key word. And for the Melbourne Cup, 22 degrees and absolute blue sky. Now, remember this, Bailey Cam. Totally illegal, they said. Totally outlawed. So we thought we'd bring it back for a second year. PD, this is going to capture the moments that are best uncaptured. There'll be plenty of them coming. Don't get nervous, mate. It'll be all right. I'll see you during the day. He's going to be a terror, Tim Bailey, today and right throughout the week. And what a week we've got in front of us with, of course, Amy Victoria Derby coming up today. And then it just goes through until the Foster's Melbourne Cup on Tuesday, then Crown Oaks Day on Thursday and the Emirates Stakes on Saturday. A wonderful week in front of us. And uh, 10 o'clock until 5 o'clock today, we are up and running. And, of course, don't forget the Cup preview tomorrow because we will hopefully be finding the uh, winner of the Foster's Melbourne Cup for you between 1 and 2 Eastern Daylight Time. As I said, Cup Day on Tuesday, and then it all continues on Thursday and also on Saturday. Today's program getting underway at uh, 20 minutes past 11 local time, and that is with the William Inglis Carbine Club Stakes. As I've already mentioned, it is a day of highlights, and we have that Group 1 treble coming up a little bit later on, and that includes... The Amy Victoria Derby, the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes and the Salinger Stakes and that comes up a little bit later in the day but uh, we've got a lot to look forward to. It all begins at 20 past 11 and the highlights just keep on coming. Well here at Flemington today, assembling at the start of the day is the illustrious panel. We always have a bit of a ritual here on Derby Day where we get together, say good day to each other and then we can't stand the sight of each other for the next four days of racing. <laughs> That's not true at all. Jenny Chapman, Richard Freeman, John Letts, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Peter. Morning, Peter. How are you? Oh, look, I'm very well. Thanks for asking and it's wonderful to have you all back. I Jen? don't really care. <laughs> all right, well, uh, Richard started off in fine form. Jen, I'll come to you because you'll make some sense. I'll try to. We have a bit of a ritual. You always drive out to Flemington on Derby Day, and when we come through the gates at the start of the day, we know that there's something special in the air. Certainly do, Peter, and we've got some great racing here today at Flemington. There's some fabulous horses, lots of millions of dollars of horse flesh running around here today. And what about the traffic? It was quite busy this yeah. morning, very early. Now, what about you, Grumpy? Uh, <laughs> yes. It hasn't been the greatest carnival. I don't want to remind you of that too much, but it might all change today in the Amy Victoria Derby. Well, thanks for reminding me of that, but yeah, yes, <laughs> it might all change today. We're, we're looking for a uh, you know, really good performance from Bush Padre, and racing's a funny game. can turn around in a second. Mm. So uh, you, while you're still in the game, you're still a chance. And Johnny Letts, for the eighth year, yes. you are reunited with your old mate Banjo. Yes, and I, uh, I look like losing the job, Pete, because there was a guy on him last night here in the mountain yard, Rich. He, he didn't look good on him either. Who was that? The guy over there. Yes, he poor actually banjo. rode Banjo around the mountain yard last night and then went back into the winner's stall, didn't you? I did. And he said, this is what it feels like to win a Melbourne Cup. It looked like a spider riding a fly. <laughs> <laughs> I might say you did lead him around, didn't you? I, I did so lead him around. I was just, just there. I was the leading <laughs> owner, see, because I led him around. And then after, something yes. I've never seen him do before that horse was get down on his knees and bow while, you, while he was on his back, but he couldn't get up again. He got down and he said, he said, I must have won the Melbourne Cup. He said, I've got top weight. And the other thing he did too was talk. I didn't realise Banjo was a talking horse because he did talk to me. And you know what he said? He did. Get off. 
<laughs> Let's go down to the track now and find out the all-important track condition because there has been a lot of talk about the state of the Flemington track over the past couple of weeks. We have had a little bit of rain overnight. The gentleman down on the track to tell us all about it and fill us in will be in the commentary box for the four days. Dan Maliki and Gary Willits, good morning to you both. Yeah, thank you very much, Peter, and welcome, everyone. Well, we're pleasantly surprised. There's not really any moisture uh, or excess of it on the track at the moment. You wouldn't have even known we had a little bit of drizzle overnight, Gary. It's actually in fairly good order considering uh, what we've heard throughout the week. Yeah, well, I'm really surprised with this track. Uh, where I'm standing now, we're about seven metres off the inside rail. That's where the rail's been the last few meetings. Of course, I've moved it back in and that's all new ground. And I walked around to the 600 metre mark and I was really surprised how good this track is. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if it's upgraded to dead later on. The inside is uh, 5.08, the outside is 4.91, but uh, not a lot of difference. Look, if you like a horse today, I'd back it because I don't think the track's going to have any uh, noticeable effect on horses. Track is officially rated as slow. It had been heavy as of uh, yesterday. Certainly on the improve, there's a good cushion of grass. The, the rail was out last time, so we've got fresh ground, and the rail is in the true position today. Particularly that ins inside section's in good order. It looks as if it may be just slightly more cut up. They did have gallops down the outside uh, earlier on in the week. But overall, the track is in much better condition than most of us had anticipated. It's officially a reading as a slow, and I'm sure we'll have to look for horses with form with a sting out of the ground, Gary, but it's nowhere near as bad as what I think a lot of us were expecting. There might be some patches better or worse than other sections, uh, but certainly the, the slow track rating, I'd, I'd even be saying it was on the better side of slow. Yeah, definitely, and like uh, with this umbrella, it's me old faithful every year, but, you know, it's, you can hardly get it into the ground then, which is, uh, like, if this cloud cover goes and the sun comes through, this track will dry out quite a bit. And just for a tip earlier on of the day, Pete, perhaps on the fence, three out from the fence might be the place to be until it might start to even out by about halfway through the day. Good luck. OK, Dan, good luck to you too. Dan Maliki, who will be calling his 12th Foster's Melbourne Cup on Tuesday, but a big day coming up in front of Dan and Gary today on Amy Victoria Derby Day. Well, the other important piece of information is the scratching, so why don't we take a look at them for the program, beginning with the first event, the William Inglis Carbine Club Stakes. And from the first, you can take out number eight, Paradiddle, and 18, Candana Lad, the rider for number 17, Count Virgo, is Gregory Michael Hall. Race two on the card, and this is the Shivers Regal. And uh, the starting time for the second event is 12 o'clock. And the scratchings here are three super elegant, 10 Queen and 11 Lord Dane, no riding changes. The third, the Saab Quality, big lead up for the Foster's Melbourne Cup. And the scratchings here are the emergency 17 Friends or Rom and number 18 Zartea, no riding changes. Fourth, the Hardy Brothers Classic. And here you can take out number 15 Porter Rocker, 18 Miss Zoe and 19 Flush. The rider for 17 Super Sequel is Darren Gauchi. Qantas Wakeful Stakes is race five on the card and the scratchings here are the emergency 17 Dark Wine, 18 Alishan and number 19 Mandalay. The big one, the Amy Victoria Derby, race six at 2.40 Eastern Daylight Time. The emergency 17 big pat comes out, no riding changes. Race number seven on the card, the Louis Vuitton McKinnon Stakes. 132nd running, no scratchings, a field of 16, no riding changes. Race eight, the Salinger at five past four. Here you can take out number 10, Mannington, and number 12, Mr Bombastic, 10 and 12, no riding changes. And from the final event on the program, the Yellenby Stud Stakes at 4.45. Scratchings here are number three, Paint, seven, Buster Jones, and at number nine, Civil List. There are no riding changes, and we have 15 running. So there you have the scratchings for the program. Well, the horses were out bright and early for the last minute uh, track work touches this morning, and out bright and early with them is Mark Aston. Mark, as we say, good morning to you. Any news to report from this morning? Yes, good morning, Peter. Good morning uh, to you all. We hope we can pick a winner for you on Amy Victoria Derby Day, uh, wherever you may be around Australia or whether you're here at Flemington. Pete, obviously the big talking point, as we've already discussed, is the state of the track. Now, we know it's slow at the moment. There is some indication there will be no more rain today, and and that means the track upgrade may occur, but we'll wait and see on that. David Hall this morning at around about 7.30, one of the key trainers here on Amy Victoria Derby Day, walked the track. This is what he had to say. Well, I was quite surprised actually, Mark. I mean, last night I walked at about 6 o'clock and there was a fair bit of give still in the track. And this morning we got to uh, track work and there's a slight sort of shower of rain, which didn't really register to be too much. I don't think we even got a mill out of it. 
the grass was wet, but I think the track had improved underneath. I think, um, you know, I think uh, Ross Bradfield has described it as slow, and um, if the sun came out, there's a chance that it could get to dead, and you know, I'd, I'd have to believe that would be the case. And what about hit the roof? Watch. Yeah, so, and what about hit the roof? And uh, I know David is fairly keen on the chances of hit the roof. He's got hit the roof, of course, in the Amy Victoria Derby. Just a late tip this morning, Peter Early, St Petersburg. Peter Hayes is very keen on St Petersburg in race two. Good punting. Good on you, Mark. Thanks very much to Mark Aston, who'll be joining us right throughout the day here at Flemington. Well, speaking of the Amy Victoria Derby, why don't we have a look at what the tote figures are showing at this stage for the big race on the card. And we can see here that Scalato has come up a very short price favourite. I'll bring Jenny Chapman in here, and I wouldn't have thought it would have been those odds, Jen. Well, you do, do have to be a little concerned from Barrier 16 with Scalato. I mean, he, he does look a pretty damn good, I've got to say. Um, but uh, those odds, I'd be frightened of it. I'd, I'd go around him there. Yeah, we're unable to bring you the Queensland totes just at the moment, but as we go down to the uh, second lot, Bush Padre, well, it's come up at uh, reasonable each way odds, Richard Friedman. I thought he'd be longer odds than that, Pete. I think uh, that's the you know the early market, and I think during the day you'll see him ease out from that quote. But uh, he's probably not great value at that at that price either. So. Uh Probably looking around both of them at those, those prices, but later in the day it will change. It will change when the pools get a little bit bigger and they will get very big throughout the day. And uh, any money that's not going on the tote today is going to be out here at Flemington. It's going to be in the betting ring. And the man who brings us up today with all of the plungers is the new father, Timothy Gossage. First of all, congratulations and good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Pete. Yeah, fatherhood. It's a wonderful experience, <laughs> I can assure you. 135 horses today racing, so 135 chances for punters to find a winner. Of course, it is here, along the rails with the bookmakers, where a lot of the action takes place. And over the years, we've seen plenty of plungers, some successful, some not. Today and over the next four days, I'm sure there'll be plenty of action. They're already tipping a match race in the derby between Scalato and Universal Prince. But, Peter, one thing is for certain, if you back one or two winners on Derby Day, you'll end up in front because there's plenty of value. Indeed, there will be plenty of value. Tim Gossage and all of the last minute information that happens in the betting ring, Tim will be there to keep us up to date. Well, there's a million dollars up for grabs in the Army Victoria Derby today. The trophy is a beauty. It's uh, always a prized one for any owner of a race course, a race horse, and there it is in the studio with us. Wouldn't mind having that in your metal piece, Gem, would you? I don't think I've got a metal piece big enough for it. <laughs> it's a beauty. Well, you might have to hold that later on. You might be taking that home, Richard Friedman. That'd be lovely. Put it with the other two that we've got. And let's see, we're not going to give it to you because you'll probably drop it. I'll most likely have a bath in it, it's big enough. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Let's see, he's opened up in fine form. I hope you've opened up in uh, fine form on Amy Victoria Derby Day. If you're looking for a bit of luck, Milton Black might be able to help you out with some lucky numbers. And we hope you do have a successful day on Amy Victoria Derby Day 2000. You're watching it around Australia on Network 10.